Hi, Stampers. It's Lisa. Welcome to today's live. Um, today, we're going to be working with what you saw was the uh, share milkshake bundle. That's something I have used before. And there is a tutorial for a bunch of cards with that bundle. But what I'm really featuring is these new dies that are going to be in our holiday catalog, the September to December mini. And these circles are amazing. I, you know that I love basic shapes. I think basic shapes need to be in every crafter's craft room because they are useful for everything and we're going to be using them today to make a gatefold card that's a circle so we're going to work on how to make that flap using our circles and then we're going to layer them together and you're going to see how pretty they are when the edges are all deckled so let's move down to my desk Welcome everyone. I see it's hot like everywhere. Um, we're only at about 90 here and it's supposed to go up to like 95. Um, but then it's going to cool down and go to like 76, 78 when I'm in Vegas. Go figure, right? We're going to finally cool down and I'm not going to be in town and then it's going to go back up. Just my luck, right? <laughs> so like I said, this is the share a milkshake bundle. And it has, of course, the stamp sets that are what we call two-step stamping. And we're going to show that. And we're going to do the base and then the detail over it. And then they have these dies that can cut out the shapes or you can cut them out in solid colors. This would be just a backdrop to something. This is a waffle cone. We have our various ice cream pieces. There's the ice cream, the hot fudge, and the whipped cream. You can choose to use the spoon spoon or the straw, the cherry, and then this is a little dish of ice cream with little ice cream that goes on top. And of course they do cut out um, the pieces on here. And what I love about the ice cream for the larger thing is it has a little hole in it, like it cuts a little slit that allows it to house the spoon or the straw, which is really great. Oh, thank God we're cooling down in Vegas. <laughs> thank you. 119 was not on my bucket list. Okay. Uh, we're going to need to start with our card base, which is a five and a half by seven and a quarter. So it's scored at four and one quarter, and then I have three inches of an overhang. So when this folds... It's going to have kind of a little gap here. And then I made a designer series paper layer to go over it. Now this designer series paper is new. You may not recognize it. This is again from our new holiday catalog. And look, it's all flowers. This is part of the walk in a garden bundle suite. And, all goes, and it's all floral, right? And I'm not doing anything floral today. But all the backs are nice and generic. And so I'm just using one of the backs of these, which is this one here, because I thought this just kind of looked like an ice cream shop. Maybe that's just me. Now, if you are into designer series paper, if new papers and new ribbons excite you, then I have something fun. I'm doing what I call a product share. And what that means is I'm going to get the full packs of the designer series paper, full spools of the ribbon, and I'm going to cut it all up into sample sizes, like just, you know, one of each paper and one yard of each ribbon and bundle those together as what we call product shares. And you have the option to purchase those on my website. I'm going to put the link in the comments. Um, and it's a great way to get your hands on every single designer series paper in the catalog without breaking the bank. So um, if you want to get your hands on this, that's how you do it. You would make your reservation now and then I order it the first week of September. So I won't send out the PayPal invoices until like the end of the month, beginning of next month. So just reserve it now, and when we're ready, I'll send you an invoice for payment. 
but I just kind of want to know how many to start making because I was able to pre-order some of the papers. And so I have started cutting up some of what I have. Some I'm obviously using for samples and some I'm getting ready for the paper shares because I want to be able to get those out rather quickly because as we know, I'm going to that cruise to Hawaii um, the end of September. So they need to be out and in the mail long before that. Um, I'm really sad to hear about everything that's going on in Maui. That sounds awful. Maui was on our list of spots that we were supposed to stop at. And obviously now we can't. So they have kind of rearranged our islands and we're going to stay on a different island for a little longer. But I'm kind of bummed I didn't get to see um, Maui because I hear it is gorgeous. Okay, then I took the layering circles and these circles are huge. And this one is actually like four down. This is, you know... <laughs> We didn't use the largest circle. This one is the fourth one in real red. And then I have smoky slate is the next size down. So this would be five. And then the, this one is six in basic white. And so we're going to be layering those on top of each other. And they're going to kind of go across the card. Now, obviously, see how it kind of hangs off the edge over here? So what I kind of need to do is ballpark it. So I want to set my layer in there as if it was adhered, but I'm not quite adhering it down yet. I'm just figuring out where it's going to be. And then I'm eyeballing where my circle is going to go. So then I'm just, you can use, I use my fingernail a lot. Um, but you can also just use a little pencil mark or something to tell yourself where that is going to be on the edge of the white inside layer. So then I'm going to bring in my trimmer and I'm going to set those little marks in the track of my trimmer and I'm going to score. So making sure that I'm using the tan blade and not the other one. I want the scoring blade only, not the cutting. And I'm scoring that edge. Okay, and then we can take our other layers and again, eyeball it as to where it's going to lay. And then I'm going to draw a pencil line where that's going to be. And then I'm going to stick this in my trimmer. And this time we're going to use the cutting blade because I don't want too much bulk underneath. So I'm just cutting on that line we just made. Again, you want to make sure that you are often taking a piece of paper and I fold it in half and I put it down in the track just to pull out all of this like fuzz. And I've been cutting some of our shinier paper and little pieces of glitter in there. Things that would make it not cut very nice. See, and there was even a second time there's more lint. So just run a piece of paper down your track often, clearing that out. You may be admiring my little measurement thing here with our eighth of an inch. You can find that in my online store. That is a free download. And then, of course, there's a lot of other wonderful downloads over there for tutorials. And that's where you can buy the um, my ribbon bow maker tool. That's it. <laughs> if you want to make perfect bows, um, we have a bow maker tool that my husband made. And I have not only written directions, but also video directions that come with it when you purchase that from my store. And then I do have the um, trucking along bundle is up there now for purchase, as well as the hay chuck and a bunch of other ones we've done recently. Um, the fishing one is almost done and that's gonna be up there soon. So if you are interested in 
um, not only the video directions, but things in print with the diagrams and all that good stuff. Those are going to be in my tutorial store. Okay, so I'm just setting that on there by butting up the edge right there. Okay, now we're ready for the white. And so I'm going to lay that on there, figuring, you know, I'm kind of eyeballing where that's going to be an even edge. And then again, we're going to use the pencil mark. And then I'm going to come in with my trimmer and trim right on that line. And then I'm going to do my stamping before adhering it to my card front. Now I know it's going to go this way and this is going to set on here, but I'm going to go ahead and stamp first because there is the chance I'm going to mess that up and I may need to flip this over and use the other side. And I would not be able to do that if it was already glued down. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to stamp my little ice cream holder first. And I'm going to do that in two colors. I'm doing mine in basic gray and then smoky slate. It looks pretty in lots of different color combinations, um, but this is just what I'm choosing to use today. I've tried stamping this both ways, doing the solid first and then the detail over it or the detail and the solid over it. For this one in particular, I had a tendency to like it better and line up a whole lot easier when I did the dark first with the detail. And then I'm going to come in with the solid in the lighter color. And then it was really easy for me to see. I'm watching this point here and this point here. So that when I set this down over the top, I'm going to have my best chance at lining that up well. Of course, looking straight down from the top gives you your best angle, but I did pretty good considering I wasn't straight down. And that's how they look one on top of the other. So it just gives it a little bit of depth. And I still thought it was kind of floating there um, in the air. So I used my blending brushes and blended a little at the bottom just for the sake of grounding it. And then I did kind of a highlight on the top. And I actually need to clean my brushes, and this is good timing because I was thinking of doing a video on how I clean my brushes, so I'll be able to do that because I had used this one with Pebbled Path, and it's like the closest I have. I've got some greens and blues over there, and none of them just like match up to the gray. I probably need to buy some more um, of these, but... I'm going to start by swirling off the paper and then go on. I find the little brush head helpful because it allows me to have more control so that I can keep it just underneath my glass. And I'm not going to go up very high because there's a little bit of a green tone in here from somewhere. So something I've used recently had a little bit of a green tone to it and I didn't like that. So I'm going to go really light and just make sure it's not floating. And then for this one, I used um, a scrap I had. When I have my stamp sets, and I put it back in here, and I have spare parts. I didn't put it back in here. I have a tendency to put the spare parts in a little baggie and keep them with the stamp case. So when I opened that stamp case, there was a little baggie, which I can't find right now, which is dumb because it's probably right here on my desk. Um, and it had a bunch of little spare parts in it. So this is Blushing Bride, which recently retired, but it was already cut. So <laughs> I just kind of went with it. 
So, um, I used the pink behind that. This time I cut my ice cream to fit. So I used very vanilla for our vanilla ice cream. I used early espresso for the hot fudge. Basic white for our whipped cream. And then real red for the cherry. And then I have our little spoon in silver. So that will slide into there. So I still think because of the pink here that it, I'm okay putting pink behind where the ice cream is going to go. So I'm going to come in with um, another blending brush. And this one's actually an off brand. Again, like I said, I need to buy a few more because I don't like this one as well. I don't have as good a luck with it. I don't know what it is or why, because they do feel very similar, but I don't know. It's not the same. Silly, I know, but it's not. But I'm just gonna put a little bit of pink behind there, just as a highlight behind where my ice cream is gonna go, so that when I go ahead and adhere it, that's gonna pop out from behind, just as kind of a little accent. Okay, so now I need liquid glue because I'm gonna go ahead and put our ice cream sundae together here. Oh, and look, this one has adhesive sheet. So let's go with that. I'm gonna use the take your pick tool to easily peel that off. I can also use it to hold my piece so I can set it on there. And it is designed to match up kind of almost exactly. Um, I'm letting it go over just a teensy bit. Doesn't matter. Um, I would rather have it too high than too low because I don't want to see what's behind there. Okay, this one's going to need some liquid glue. And I'm matching them up by using this little V right here on the back side. All three of these pieces have this little V. And so I'm kind of matching that up. Okay, and then I have our cherry. Again, this one had adhesive sheet. Some of these were spare parts I just had in the bag. So apparently what I was doing before, I was just adhering them direct and they wanted the adhesive. Okay, so now the back is all sticky and I'm not necessarily gonna stick that flat. I'm gonna pop it up on dimensionals. And so because of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with our embossing buddy and I'm going to just tap onto here with the embossing buddy and put some behind there and make it no longer sticky. So if you ever get adhesive somewhere where you don't want it anymore, the um, embossing buddy that comes in our little embossing kit is perfect for that. If you don't have that, maybe a little bit of talcum powder, baby powder, um, cornstarch, something that will just, you know, give it a light little coating so it's not sticky. Then I'm ready to, um, let's see, let's adhere this first. So I'm going to use some liquid glue because I want to be able to move it just a little bit. Okay, I did mail out a lot of holiday catalogs the other day. Those September to December minis, a bunch of them went in the mail. So hopefully if you're one of my customers, that has already arrived. 
Um, keep an eye out for that if you haven't. If it doesn't arrive in the next couple of days, let me know. Um, Carrie, I know you're way over there on the East Coast. Um, have you gotten your catalog yet? I'm guessing that's going to be like the furthest distance of all of them um, since I'm closer to the west side being here in Idaho. If you are new to me and wish to be one of my customers, let me know. I would be more than happy to mail you a catalog. They are free, but I just ask that if you request one that you are indeed shopping with me. If you are shopping with someone else, um, get your catalog from them. <laughs> just because we all, we all say that because we all pay for them, so... And if you have someone who you would like to introduce to me um, as a new customer, I'd like to give you a little thank you um, because there's no better compliment than to re recommend me to your friends. Okay, so now that I have that on there, I did that with liquid glue again so I could wiggle it. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my seal for the inside just because. Ooh, probably should have stamped it first because I am going to add a few stamped images to the inside. Okay, I've got some little mini hearts here. I'm going to stamp those in real red. This time I'm going to go in the opposite corners. Um, on the inside of this one, I did them that way. So it doesn't matter, just a little something to make it match the outside. Which, of course, could use a few of those too, huh? And I'm going to stamp the sentiment in basic gray. I went ahead and laid the stamp on my grid paper, making sure that my word was straight with one of the lines on the grid paper and then my block straight on the grid paper. And there we go. So if you like my cards and you like attending with me here on um, live, what you um, might want to do is join me for one of our classes with the new catalog coming out. Laura and I, Laura is a demonstrator in Canada. She and I picked a couple bundles out of here. Our main bundle we're using is Classic Christmas. And then we're going to use another bundle out of here is if you want to upgrade. But we're going to be making Christmas cards on Zoom. And it's going to be an all-day online virtual retreat using this bundle. And, of course, the DSP that goes with it. And there's another bundle um, that you can upgrade and add on. So there's three different levels depending on what you want. And um, I highly recommend you join us for that because it is so fun. We get on um, Zoom for a full day. We get on at probably about 10 Pacific or no, 10 Mountain, 9 Pacific, and then go to about four. And that's the link for that. If you want to go check it out, the link there is just a big long page demonstrating or you know, talking about everything we're going to be doing, all the prizes you can win and um, give you some information. And there's a, a little link there where you can say you would like to register. Again, the retreat is not happening until October. It's going to be October 28th. So right now, all you're doing is saying, save my spot. I want to join you. And then sometime in early October is when you would get your invoice. So I'm invoicing the beginning of September for paper shares and ribbon shares. And then the beginning of October for the online retreat. 
Okay, so here is the ice cream I'm going to put on top there. Apparently my fingers were dirty. So I'm going to bring in my adhesive remover. I'm just going to pull that off of there. I love this little adhesive remover. Stampin' Up! used to sell it. We don't anymore. But it is fairly inexpensive. There's, of course, a link on my website to the Amazon one. But you can get these at the dollar store for a buck. So I highly recommend doing that. Okay. And I'm going to put some dimensionals behind this just to give it a little bit of lift. Stick our spoon in the opening there before I do that because I don't want to cover up our little hole so I'm just inserting that in there and I'm going to use my dimensional to hold that spoon in place and then I'm going to add one more up here behind the cherry but I'm going to use a smaller one for that Now you can choose to this again, this is sticky. You can choose to either put the powder behind that or what I'm gonna do is stick it to the card. Um, Cause this one, I didn't have the sticky on it and it, if nobody messes with it, it's fine. But I think it could get caught on something and I don't want it to rip or pull out of there. So this one, I'm just kind of tacking down. So that's our new card using the circle gatefold technique using our new deckled circles, which are huge <laughs> and super useful and fun to play with. So whether you want um, strawberry or vanilla we have your shake all ready for you so there we go that's today's card i am going to be playing with these circles again on thursday i have a card in mind i don't have it designed yet but um that is coming on thursday and you're gonna love it so make sure that you come back and join me thursday at 2 30 mountain time for another live um, if you make any of my cards, I would love it if you come back and share them with me. Um, I did put a post uh, last Thursday in the group just saying if you've made any of my cards, um, post a picture in the comments so we can all see how wonderful your work is. Okay, let's go ahead. I have the prize wheel in the background collecting everybody's um, name. So if you put in hashtag prize patrol, then the computer has already collected your name. If you haven't, please put that in there now. It would be hashtag prize patrol all run together as one word. No spaces. And then the computer collects it. And then we will share that screen and give the wheel a spin. Mm. giveaway tool that's what we want so here is our um, wheel just giving it a second so you guys all have a minute to put that in there Um, somebody asked if I sell my cards anywhere. I do. Um, I attend several vendor fairs. I sell them off my Facebook page. I have an Etsy store. Um, if there's anything I have made, obviously. <laughs> I was actually just going through my cards the other day. I have these really long boxes. Um, and a friend of mine picked out 70 cards and it didn't make a dent. 
So I have quite a few cards. Um, I also make custom cards. If you're ever looking for something, um, mm. a specific card in a box with certain things that um, pop out of it in certain colors, you know, definitely contact me. I'd be more than happy to whip something up. Um, her 70 cards was maybe half of one of my trays and I have six full of cards. So quite a few. <laughs> Okay, I've given everybody some time. Let's give our wheel a spin and see who today's winner is. So there we go. Jeanne is our winner. Congratulations, Jeanne. It's not exactly a milkshake, but it's still fun. <laughs> um, so go to queenbeecreations.net in the address bar up there put slash prize patrol and it will go to my google form where you fill out um the little form and give me your address and i know where to send it to um most of my cards i sell for four dollars each three for ten if they're more complex like you know the fisher vest or the tackle box something like that they're more like six dollars and if you want a custom card in a box they go up so um we can talk about it um and then i have had people that say they want a large quantity of cards and they're not picky about what they look like and there's a discount for that just so i can thin out my stash so <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone who joined me and congratulations to Jan and come back on Thursday and we'll play again with our deckled circles. I think you're going to love it. Thanks. Bye.